I began as a secondary history teacher in 1970, right here in Toronto. And then over the next 30 years, I worked for five different school boards, both public and Catholic. Um, spent 11 years as a director of education in two boards, started in Wellington County and finished in Simcoe County, the district school board there. Uh, retired as a director in December of 1999. The turn of the millennium made sense to me. Spent my first year of so-called retirement uh, working for the Ontario Public School Boards Association, OBSPA, in labor relations. And then lo and behold, along came RTO. I was approached to apply for the position. Uh, I did so and spent uh, four wonderful years here as the executive director left RTO at the end of 2004, thought I was finished working and then went on and spent another six years as a vice president of an executive search firm. Then I retired. The very first thing I did in joining RTO was to uh, conduct a rather large entry process, interviewed literally dozens and dozens of people. And that clearly pointed out that there were some challenges, I guess we would call them opportunities, that RTO should be trying to address in the near future. One of the very first things that popped out was the need to begin to hire a more professional staff. And so with the blessing of the executive and the approval of Senate in my first year, we started to hire. We repaired our relationships over time with the affiliates and OTF and the, and the pension plan board. How did we do it? By face-to-face -face meetings. We listened, which I think in the past we have been accused of not doing that very well. We came and we listened and we offered our perspective on things. Turned out to be a very important step because in the year 2001, people will remember if they were around then, that was the year of the massive pension surplus. And how was that pie going to get you know, sorted out, divvied up. Well, I represented RTO on the OTF Pension Committee, attended countless meetings there, and at the end of the day, we as an organization were able to say that our retirees got more than their fair share of that rather large surplus. Had we not repaired relationship, would that have happened? I don't think so. For many members, RTO is their social link to the outside world. They may not have people around them on a daily basis, and I think sometimes we forget that loneliness is a, it, a, such a contributing factor to people's health as we age. And I, and I say as a member that what RTO can offer to people of whatever age of retirement they are in uh, is almost too numerous to mention. I know that there's a new form of governance, and I think that demonstrates the continuing evolution and growth of this organization. So it's growing as it must and as it should. And the new governance model, now that it's coming into being, will serve members well into the future. So I do think, in that sense, um, the future is looking quite positive. Uh, a word of caution, I would say that to whomever might you know, deign to ask me. RTO must always remember its mandate is to serve others. STO has to mean something. Uh, S uh, RTO started as the superannuated teachers of Ontario. Somebody long before me coined the expression service to others. When I came here, we used that a lot because it made sense and in my view it still does. I spent 30 years of my life with my number one priority being students. RTO afforded me the opportunity to make teachers my number one priority. So for that experience I am ever grateful.